Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today we are putting some things into the vegetable garden. You recently saw me preparing this vegetable garden for use this year and putting in my stepping stone pathway and putting up my pea trellis. Peas are coming right along. So today we are going to be planting some seeds and also putting in some starts that I had started indoors. So come with me and let's get some things planted in the vegetable garden. If you've been following on my channel lately, you know that I took some overhead shots of this garden and it looks like a leaf. And so I put in some stepping stones uh, using bricks uh, so that I can get in through the vegetable garden and tend to my plants, but also has a little bit of a, I don't know, a little fun flair, making it look a little bit like a leaf when it is uh, looked at from overhead. So then I uh, measured the, all of the different sections of the garden and now I know how big they are. And so then what I did was I sectioned each subsection off into square feet and I drew these little um, approximate boundaries of square foot sections in each of the garden sections. And now I can use the square foot gardening method for planning out my vegetable garden for this coming season. So I have pretty much laid out what I'm going to be planting into which sections of the gardens. This is a draft, of course, it's all penciled in, it's not uh, in there, nothing is permanent, everything is changeable. Uh, but I'm planning to put in uh, tomatoes over there by the peas, um, and then all the different vegetables that I want to grow this year each have a space. So I ran out of space before I found places to put in my cucumbers and my pole beans. Um, I'm a little bit thinking about, uh, you know, they both need tall trellising and I could use the pea trellis when the peas are done, but I think I need to get my cucumbers and beans into the ground before the peas are going to be done. I don't know. I might have to play that one by ear or I might need to find a different space to put my cucumbers and pole beans and put up a different trellis somewhere else for them. So I have to kind of wait and see how that goes as the season progresses, as the heat comes, maybe the peas will be done by then. Maybe they won't. I don't know. Also, I want to be doing successions of some of my stuff, including uh, lettuce, spinach, radishes, and those can be succession planted all the way up through when the heat hits in the summer. For us, usually it gets starts to get unbearably hot in about mid-June, uh, unbearable for those cool weather crops, I mean. Uh, mid-June is about when those cool weather crops die out. So uh, I'll be able to do successions in this bed up until then. I have a lot of tomatoes and a lot of peppers currently growing as seedlings in my seed starting area. And I don't know that I'm going to have room in this garden to plant all of the different kinds of tomatoes and peppers that I have planned for. So I may end up with tomatoes and peppers in other spaces in the garden as well. Now I do have the two other tiers of this garden space and honestly I have thought that the middle one will be for cut flowers and the bottom one for perennials but that's just a general idea and if I find that I want to put my cucumbers and pole beans in this middle tiered garden I will do that. I don't know I'm just going to kind of play it play it by ear and see how it goes but also I need to wait until the summer sun comes around so I can see the sun pattern. So for today, I'm going to be planting some seeds, but first let's talk about the seedlings that I have. These are Sun King broccolis, and it looks like I have one, two, three, four plants in this container of Sun King broccoli. Uh, in this container, I have one, two, three, four, five pixie cabbage. Now these are a miniature, uh, miniature cabbage. Um, they only grow heads that to about five inches and they only need 10 inches spacing. So uh, this is better for a two, fam two person household. Don't eat a whole head of cabbage very quickly with only two people around. So I figured this would be a cute thing to try uh, for the first time growing cabbage. In this container I have Brussels sprouts which I've heard are difficult to grow, but I'm up for the challenge. And I have some beets, which I've heard is not great to grow from, uh, from seedlings, but I'm going to give it a try. I will also be sowing beet seeds when the time is right. It might be today. I don't know. I have to look that up and see. In this container, I have some bok choy and some komatsuna. Komatsuna is a free seed that Baker Creek sent to me last season, and it is a, a Japanese green type vegetable. So I have Looks like one bok choy and 
one, two, three Komatsunas in here. So I didn't get great germination and great success on everything, but I'm doing the best I can. In this container, these are uh, bunching onions. <laughs> Not great germination on these. I believe I have one, two, three onions total. Not exactly overwhelmingly successful, but it's three onions, right? These are the ones I planted after my grandkids were here. The ones my grandkids planted are doing much better. Uh, the blue ones, I believe, are Juliet's, and the purple ones are Leon's. And Leon and Juliet, we're going to be putting your onions into the ground today and letting them grow. And so thank you for helping me with my onion seeds, kids. I really appreciate it. In this container, I have more of the Komatsuna. This is that Japanese green, and it looks like I have one to three plants of that. I have two containers of bachelor button seeds. These will be going into the second tier for um, uh, cut flower gardening. Here's another container of bok choy. So this has one, two, three, four, five. So I think I have six total bok choys and I think six or seven total komatsunas. And those are gonna be both green, leafy green vegetables that you can stir fry. Here is a six pack of uh, black seeded Simpson lettuce. And it looks like I have two or three uh, plants in each of these cells. So quite a few. And then the last thing I have here as seedlings are these butter crunch lettuce starts. These are looking a lot sturdier than the Simpsons. Um, and I think I have four, yes, four of these butter crunches. All right, and then I have some seeds here that I pulled out that I think I might be putting into the ground. I might not. I don't know. We're going to have to do some research on them real quick and see if this is the right time of year to be putting out these seeds. Uh, but anyway, I have the Komatsuna. This is that Japanese green that I have some starts of. I might plant some more seeds of it. I have some two types of kale. Uh, one of them is lacinato kale, and the other is red Russian kale. I have some beets. These are uh, round red beets, red ace, red ace F1 hybrids. I brought out thyme. I might be starting some thyme uh, over in the area where I think I'm going to be doing an herb garden. Also the same for parsley. I brought out my lettuce seeds. I've got an all-season romaine blend. I've got more of the butter crunch and some more of the black seeded Simpson. I might be putting some of those in. And I did bring out my spinach seeds. This is baby leaf spinach. And finally, of course, this is the main thing that I definitely want to sow today, and that is my radish seeds. So that is the plan for today. Today. So now we just need to look at the map and see where to put everything. So it's quite a complicated endeavor here. I'm just going to spend a minute and lay out my seedlings. All right, so those are roughly the areas where they're gonna go. I'm gonna go get a bucket of compost from our compost pile and uh, so that I'll have it so I can spread a thin layer of compost on the top of each of these beds as I'm planting. Now, the way I've planned my garden, I'm gonna have this front six inches uh, that's up next to the grass. Uh, that's going to have radishes over that way in front of the peas. And then along here, it'll be onions and shallots and garlic. Uh, all the way around. So hopefully that will help deter um, squirrels and rabbits uh, to keep these alliums family plants along here. Uh, we'll see how that works. And then on the other side, inside of that border of alliums, I'll be planting my veggies. Now, uh, so this, for, I've got roughly three rows worth of space in here. So I'm going to be putting cabbages right along the bricks here. Now these are the uh, pixie cabbages that need 10 inches of space and I have roughly four feet along here so that's 48 inches so I can fit roughly five of them along here and I'm going to go ahead and fudge that a little bit so that I can 
have more. Before I put my cabbages in the ground, I'm gonna put some compost along there. This is mostly finished compost from our own compost pile. It might still have a few chunks of things in it, but for the most part, it's finished. I'm trying not to step on my uh, soil, but I might now and again put my foot on there, but trying not to. Not using any special planting method, just making a small hole and tucking this root ball into the small hole. I space these roughly five or six inches away from the brick pathways. Again, oh, there's a nice huge grub. I wonder what that's for. It's gonna be for the birds now. Uh, so five or six inches away from the brick, brick path because the package says they need a 10 inch spacing. So five on either side works out great. All right, so that's all there is to that. Five cabbages in the ground. And since there's nothing else going in this space today, I'm gonna go ahead and do the onions across the front here. These are three garlics and two over there that I planted last fall. I had more in there, but they didn't all survive. Give them a little boost of compost energy this spring. soil in this part of the bed isn't all that great because it's basically the ground level where we just put a little bit of compost on top of the soil last fall. But the wild onions don't mind the soil so I'm thinking that the cultivated ones won't either. We'll see won't we? My plan calls for lettuce in a row here, kind of in a curve like that. And so I'm gonna use the one that I have the most of, which is this black seeded Simpson. Decided not to separate these. I'll just, I'm gonna be harvesting these, harvesting these as cut and come again lettuces, so they can grow tightly together that way. Now I could be putting these a lot closer together than I am, but I think what I'm going to do is sow more seeds in between them. So they'll have a succession all in this same row. So these plants, I started, I think, I forget when, a few weeks ago. And so now I, I could have put them uh, like three inches apart from each other, but uh, I've put them far enough apart, so I'm gonna sow some more seeds in between them, which hopefully, if the seeds germinate, hopefully they will uh, be a succession so that when these plants are done, the ones in between will be um, big. All right, and now these Butter Crunch, I think I have four of these. That looks so pretty. Nothing quite like little baby vegetables freshly put into the soil. Now what? Broccolis and beets are next.
This section of the vegetable garden is going to have three different plants in it over the course of the season. On this third of it, it will be bush beans, down the center, bok choy, and then on the right side of it, I'm gonna to try to fit in two, maybe three summer squash or zucchini plants. I'm gonna grow those vertically so that they don't sprawl all over the place, and hopefully that will be successful. Now, I have some bok choy here. I also have komatsuna, and on my planting plan, I forgot to put in a space for komatsuna. Uh, they can go six inches apart, so I'm gonna use up the center foot or so of this section, and I'm gonna uh, do a zigzag of bok choy and komatsuna and hopefully fit in all of the plants. Now, I do have tulips in here. I'm gonna be treating these tulips like annuals. They will come out once they are done blooming um, because they just don't return very strongly and, and healthily in, this, in the follow-on years here in our climate. So the tulips are going to stay here. I'm going to plant the bok choy and komatsuna in between them and then in uh, later in the spring when the tulips are done I'll take the tulips out and leave the greens and hopefully that will work. All right, so hopefully that will be perfect spacing. The last seedlings that I have ready to go today are these Brussels sprouts. I have three cells. Each of the cells has three plants. I'm not going to plant uh, all nine plants. I'm going to plant I'm going to see if I can separate. I want four plants is what I want. So I'm going to see if I can separate them and uh, plant four of the plants. If I can't get them separated nicely, then I'll just snip off two of the three in each of the cells and just have three of the cells. So let's see. All right, I did get one separated off and uh, remaining one, and I'll just throw the other one away. Now these, I'm just gonna thin out two of the three. I need to get some compost though before I go any further. keeping one of the two the, one of the three that grew in there so I'm gonna pinch off two of these leaving one okay roughly 12 inch spacing or so This is the guy whose roots were the most disturbed, so if he fails, I'm guessing that will be why. One, two, three, four. Lovely. I've made terrific and exciting progress in the vegetable garden today. I am not done, but my dogs are telling me that they wanna go on their afternoon walk. So I'm gonna walk the dogs, eat some lunch, and then I'm gonna come back and finish taking care of getting all of this settled in for the season. So I'll see you in just a little bit. Well, I have enjoyed a good lunch and I walked the dogs and took a little break and now I'm back to finish up my planting plan for the vegetable garden today. So a couple of things. Uh, I do have all the plants in the vegetable garden into the soil, but now I need to water them in. I'm going to water them in with some water soluble fertilizer. This is Neptune's Harvest Organic Fish Emulsion Fertilizer, fish and seaweed, and its uh, nutrient value is 231 NPK. So I'm going to use this for um, watering. The directions say to shake well and use one eighth cup per gallon of water. So one eighth cup. I'm just going to estimate this is a three gallon um, watering can here. Is it three? Yeah, three gallon watering can. So that means three eighths of a cup. I'm just going to kind of estimate. 
There we go. I'm gonna fill up my watering can from the hose and water in all of the vegetables. The last thing I need to do for the, all the vegetables that I just planted, or at least some of them, is to protect them. Now there's two things I'm protecting against. One, I, I'm protecting my coal crops, everything that's related to cabbage. So the cabbages and the komatsuna and the bok choy and the Brussels sprouts. I'm protecting those from, or white cabbage butterfly. Uh, the reason is because even though the butterfly is very pretty as it flutters around the garden, it's actually very harmful because it will lay its eggs onto the cabbages or the Brussels sprouts or the broccoli or the bok choy, lay its eggs on there, and then those eggs will hatch and become caterpillars and they will eat the leaves of all of those cabbage crops. So I'm going to be using this method. This is a wire basket that I got at the Dollar Tree and it has a little wire mesh on it and the wire mesh is small enough that the white cabbage moth or white cabbage butterfly can't get through the mesh. So I'm going to cover each of my brassica crops with one of these wire baskets from the Dollar Tree. As the plants grow, I will replace them with larger versions of that. And then as the garden fills in, I may end up covering it with some row cover fabric uh, and hoops. I might be using the cover crop white fabric cloth in the future, but for now, the crops are far enough away from each other that it would be kind of a pain in the booty. To... Anyway, I'm using these wire baskets uh, to cover and protect from that white butterfly. The other thing I need to protect is from the weather. Specifically, I need to protect my young lettuces from a freezing overnight temperature. We are expected to get down into the mid 20s Fahrenheit tonight, that's below zero centigrade. And uh, so I need to cover them. I'm using these cloches, these are plastic. And uh, again, these came from the Dollar Tree. Now, not every store has them in stock, so you might uh, have to check one or two different stores to find them. Uh, they might be sold out or they might have never carried them. You can ask your Dollar Tree manager if they could get them for you, or I believe you can order them online from dollartree.com and have them sent to the store for you to pick up there. The only problem with that is you have to buy things in whole lots, like a whole case. I don't know how many is in a case. So anyway, I have, I don't know, I think I have 15 or 20 of them here. That's going to be totally plenty for me. Uh, these are just made of lightweight plastic and they do have a vent in the top. So you can open it to let hot air rise during the day and then you can close it for keeping air in in the evening and I'm going to put these on to my lettuces they do have holes in the side which I will be using to put a landscape staple in there so that I can uh, so that it won't blow away in the wind now these are not sturdy enough to uh, they they are bendable you can see that so they're not the most sturdy cloche you've ever seen in your life but i'm hoping that they will do the trick of keeping my lettuce from freezing in tonight's cold temperatures i don't have to worry about the cabbages or the broccoli or the brussels sprouts or the kale freezing because it can withstand a light freeze but uh, the lettuce really can't so I'm going to cover the lettuces. When you shop at the Dollar Tree, sometimes you get what you get, and some of these don't have the black vent ring on them. So I'm going to use the ones that do have it first. So these are definitely going to blow away. I need to go get some landscape staples to tack them down. So those hopefully won't blow away. I suppose the wind could catch them, but they're not going to blow down the hill anyway. All right, so you can see how they're already uh, steaming up a little bit. The sun is warming up the moisture that's underneath there. And I'm leaving these vents open so that the hot air doesn't stay in there and uh, uh, bake it. But uh, later this evening, I will come back out and close them up so that 
the cold air doesn't go in there overnight. Here in the space between the grass and the pea planting, I have about a foot, uh, but I do have some mesh netting here that I've tacked into the ground, uh, up between the ground and up onto the uh, trellis and I put this here to keep the rabbits off of the peas. So really I just want to plant these radishes right here in the front of this bed, right in front of that netting, about four or so inches away from uh, the grass. So I do have like a little valley here. Um, the seeds are in the valley and then this mound of soil here will help the water go down into the area where the seeds are. Okay, so the veg bed is set for the day. Uh, nothing else is happening in here. I decided not to put any more seeds into the soil here. I'm gonna regroup and look at my calendar and figure out what else I wanna start indoors and what I wanna um, start directly and when all that happens. So that's pretty good. So now all I have left to do in this uh, project is to plant my bachelor buttons. I have 12, uh, well I have a 12 pack, but I might not have all 12 there. I might have 10 or so uh, bachelor button plants and they're going to go into the second tier which is set aside as my uh, cut flower garden, except that I have a ring of strawberry plants going around the front of it. Uh, and I have tulips in the middle, but in the back, I want to show you, I do have some larkspur seedlings. I threw some larkspur seed out here last fall. I have, that's a weed, but this uh, larkspur, both of those, there's some here and around in here. Uh, i planted this whole area with larkspur seed but that's what I got so I'm going to be happy with it. I'm thinking that uh, this corner here which is just down from the peas I think um, I'm going to be putting my tomatoes right yeah right in this area but that's just not enough space for all the tomatoes I have so I think I'm also going to be putting tomatoes into this area of this bed here so so if there are tomatoes up there and down here that means that I really should keep any uh, cut flowers that I want kind of like from here forward I do have tulips in here again those are going to be treated like annuals and then over on this side I tried to grow some echinacea from seed uh, down here in this area and none of it took So there they are, kind of back behind the tulips. There's, I believe, 13 little tiny seedlings planted in a little clump, and they are approximately six to eight inches apart from each other. I think there's 13 of them in this little oval-shaped area here. Well, friends, I can't tell you how happy I am to have made this progress on the garden bed today. Um, it feels so exciting. It feels like... Um, I don't know. There's something exciting about trying something new. I've never really done vegetable gardening on this scale before, and I am so eager to see how things go. Of course, I have to hope for good weather. I have to hope for, uh, you know, limited pests and all of that. But I'm thinking, you know what? Even if they don't go perfectly, I will have learned something. So this is my vegetable garden as of Saturday, March 18th, and I will be sure to give you updates as the season progresses.
thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're having a wonderful day in your gardens, wherever that is, and whatever, whatever is happening where you are. And I hope I'll see you again in another video real soon, friends. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye.